What's up guys, I'm Chill Phil, and welcome back to another episode of Black Sheep Reviews. So, last year we thought it'd be a great idea to just forego the month's usual lovey dovey BS and instead play nothing but sad and depressing games for a 28 day long event we called Feels February. It didn't go too great. Well that's fine, because here at Black Sheep Vidya, we put the past behind us, look to the future, and venture forward. See, that's why I got all this sweet adventure gear on. Got my adventure scarf, my adventure goggles to keep the adventure sun out of my adventure eyes, and this sweet, sexy denim adventure vest. Jealous? Yeah, you are. It's only appropriate that I'm rocking this Explorer Ensemble because today, we're taking a look at Hoi an adventure game developed by Polykid that strongly resembles many of the classic 3D platformers released during the mid-90s and early 2000s. Question is, will this game score a poific 10 out of 10, or is it just platforming poison? Let's find out. I kind of get the feeling that when Polykid was developing Poi, the story took a backseat to literally everything else. It's like they had written down a few basic placeholder plot points and decided, eh, this is good enough for now, we can finish this later, but then never picked it up again. Basically, two orphans decided they didn't want to be orphans anymore and ran away to the forest where they were later approached by an old man asking for assistance with getting his participation ribbon down from a tree. He later coaxes the two unsuspecting vagabond children aboard the SS Why the fuck is this blimp in the shape of a whale with promises of adventure and, presumably, candy. He then asks his new prisoners, I mean, junior explorers, to find the rest of his missing medals as well as locate this weird purple glitter snow globe because... reasons. That's it. No overarching evil plot to thwart. Just a bunch of chores for some old guy you barely even know. You like popsicles? The characters that live in the world of Poi aren't much to write home about either. They're all just so shallow and lifeless, offering nothing except challenges to earn more medals and spewing repetitive dialogue that doesn't even try to progress the story in a meaningful way. In fact, they're so forgettable, the devs didn't even bother to give any of them names. Not even the main characters! It's baffling to me that someone could work so diligently on developing a new game just to ultimately have their playable characters go by something as generic as Explorer. That's not a name, that's a descriptor. I mean, you wouldn't play something called Super Little Italian Dude 64 or Foul Mouth Squirrel's Bad Fur Day, would you? Actually, scratch that. I would still totally play those games. When it comes to visuals, Poi proudly wears its retro inspirations on its sleeve. With a world saturated in vibrant color and a creative cast of characters, this game could almost be mistaken for a lesser known Nintendo title released during the GameCube and Wii era. Notice I say, almost. Everything in this game looks so familiar yet different, like the devs took assets from more popular games and altered them just enough to avoid any copyright laws, making the whole thing feel lazy and unimaginative. Kind of like bootleg toys, or those weird off-brand cereal boxes you find at the grocery store. This is probably as good a time as any to introduce the newest sponsor to the channel, Marshmallows and Stars Cereal. It's pretty cool, it's got a, it's got a cartoon wizard on the box and ambiguous marshmallow shapes? What the hell is this? I don't know, but it's delicious. Mmm. It's just like that jingle goes. Marshmallows and stars, they're mystically delightful. You know, I get paid now. Thank you. What the hell is this? Monopoly money? I deserve that. I found the overall character designs to be strangely off-putting as well. The friendly creatures and enemies all look bloated and doofy, the human character models seem a tad disproportionate, and animation is kept to an absolute minimum with most characters only having one awkwardly robotic movement they repeat ad nauseum whenever you speak to them. Everyone's face looks painted on and emotionless and their dead eyes peer into your very soul with a cold, lifeless stare. There's just no heart in these characters, but hey, 
At least the level design is decent, I guess. Poi doesn't do anything revolutionary with its seven main areas, it just kind of checks off from the list of common video game level tropes and calls it a day. Which isn't a bad thing, just incredibly boring. There's a forest area, a lava world, an ice level, and the hub looks and acts like a more condensed, uninteresting version of the overworld in Skyward Sword. The visuals in Poi leave much to be desired. Obviously not every game needs to be the Witcher in terms of graphical fidelity, but come on! Just look at this loading screen and tell me they couldn't have tried just a little harder. Poi's soundtrack leaves me feeling conflicted. While the music in and of itself is decently orchestrated, I couldn't help but think that it didn't fit the overall unpolished visuals of the game, creating a general sense of artistic dissonance, and essentially making Poi the Tezande of video games. Visually goofy looking, but has a sound that really sneaks up on you. I can't say that I really found any of the music in Poi's soundtrack to be unappealing or even overtly bad, but it never seems to try anything new or interesting beyond what I call generalized adventure game music. The songs all sound so familiar and unoriginal, like they're trying so hard to emulate similar music tracks we've all heard a million times in other better adventure games. You have the yay, we're soaring high above the clouds on an airship or bird or something track. the quintessential ice level theme, and just try and tell me this song doesn't sound like every lava or volcano level you've ever played before. See, the soundtrack isn't exactly bad, it's just got this generic stock music vibe to it and is completely forgettable. Now, if you want bad, then allow me to introduce you to the rest of Poi's outstanding sound design. Normally, I'm not a stickler when it comes to video game sound effects, but I think I can make an exception in this case. The cartoonish sound design is fairly uninspired. The noises your character makes whenever they do anything gets annoying pretty quickly, and the sounds the enemies and NPCs make are stupid and grating. If you're still not convinced, then I have two words for you. Farting bees. Show Pill, there's a bee. Get it! I got it. <laughs> got it. What was that noise? Duh. That's the sound bees make when they die. Obviously. Okay. Know nothing about bees. Please tell me that was another bee. Yes? She doesn't smell like a bee. Oh man, here we go. This one's gonna get rough, y'all. I've had a lot of complaints about Poi up until this point, but trust me, gameplay is a whole new level of suck. But hey, before we dive headfirst into this vast pool of disappointment, let's take a second to touch on gameplay's more positive aspects. At its core, Poi plays like a solid platformer. You can jump, dive, wall kick, climb, and it all feels just as fluid and responsive as any other 3D platformer you've ever played before. Also, uh... You can wear a bucket on your head, so that's cool. And on that high note, let me explain why I think Poi's gameplay is such a resounding failure. Initially, I was having trouble putting into words just why I disliked the game mechanics so much, but then it finally hit me. Poi does absolutely nothing to innovate on the platformer genre and instead recycles features from more popular games in the most watered down way imaginable. In order for a game to be memorable, it's crucial that it tries something different to set it apart from other games within the same genre. Polykid apparently didn't get this memo. Just take combat, for example. Most adventure type games usually provide the player with multiple interesting ways to attack your enemies. In Mario Sunshine, you had Flood. In Banjo-Kazooie, you had your bird buddy to peck at foes. Hell, even Mario 64 gave you the basic option of punching things, and it came out in 96. In Poi, you jump on dudes. That's it. No weapons, no power-ups, just bounce on stuff till it pops. 
Oh, and apparently these kids are made out of frickin' rubber because they get launched 40 feet into the air anytime anything even looks at you the wrong way. Speaking of poor programming choices, some of these level designs are just confoundingly stupid and broken. Why is this gate so low I can jump over it but not get back through? Why are there random spike traps on these adobe houses? And these ice pillars, oh my god these ice pillars! Where does one begin and the other end? It's all just one giant slippery wall of blue with weird ass spike dildos on top. But by far the most egregious issue with the game is it's so unapologetically easy. I don't know if it's because I've been playing platformers my whole life or what, but the challenges are so laughably simple it's almost insulting. Maybe the game is just catering to a younger demographic or something, but I highly doubt even children would have issues with this quote unquote challenge level. Uh, I don't know guys. Everything about the gameplay and ploy is just so diluted and unfinished, and I definitely can't remember a single moment where I experienced anything even close to fun. Never really trying to go beyond the status quo, this game sure does put the poi in disappointing. I wanted to like Poi, I really did. I remember thinking when I first saw this game last year, ooh, that would be fun to review. I love 3D platformers. How wrong I was. Honestly, I haven't been this disappointed with a game in a long time. Poi fails to impress in virtually every category. The visuals are unappealing, the sound design and music are mediocre at best, the gameplay is resoundingly boring, and the story checked out after the first two minutes. This game just doesn't have any redeeming qualities, and believe me, I looked. I looked hard. The game certainly tries to trick you into thinking it's fun by doing things like hiding secret character skins and hats all over the place, but this isn't fun. This is playing the same crappy game with a different colored vest. And by the way, coloring a character completely green doesn't make them a zombie, it makes them a booger. If you're somehow able to stomach this lackluster platformer to the very end, the game rewards you by unlocking New Game Plus, which is basically the same game, only now everything is flip-flopped and you're only given one heart of health. I mean, never mind the fact that you have infinite lives and there are zero repercussions for dying, but yay, New Game Plus. I thought maybe if I collected every medal in the game, it might unlock the part of Poi that was, you know, fun. But just how were the most grueling 7 hours and 23 minutes of my life rewarded? A gaudy statue of my character sig heiling the whale blimp and a way less sexy version of the golden quiet skin from MGS5. Nope, nope, I'm done. I'm, I'm finished. This, this is a terrible game. I'm just, I can't, farting bees, like, you got your stupid giant pillars of ice and what is this? I'm done. I'm finished. Hey, chill pill, come back. You gotta finish up. No, 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 no. Yeah, you gotta. No, this game's garbage. No. Come on, the people are waiting for a score. Fine. Hi. Poi is a game, I think. <laughs> Sacrificial win. So, until next time, I'm Chill Pill reminding you to save money on dental care, try brushing your teeth once a day so your toothbrush and toothpaste last twice as long. See ya! Hey Junior Explorers! I hope you enjoyed our poifically amazing review! Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Black Sheep Vidya and subscribe to the channel so you can keep up with all our sheepy shenanigans. Question for ya, what are your favorite and least favorite 3D platformers of all time? Let us know in the comments below and we'll see you next time.